I'm Doug Putman, and I'm on Help Bank. Today I'm going to teach you everything I know about business. How does someone make a billion dollars? The answer is you start with a small amount of money and you invest it wisely and it, it builds for you. Uh, my first investment was not a lot of money and it just grew and I took that money and invested in more businesses. How do you decide which businesses to buy? In the beginning, the first business I was a part of was a family business and so it was easy just to get involved in it on a sales level. After that, I got into the music business and, and what I would call declining industry, mainly because it was a, a passion, something I really enjoyed doing, but also because the, the price made a lot of sense. It was something I could put a little bit of money into, take a, a small risk on it, but if it worked, there was a, a big reward. And as my career has, has evolved, it's continued to be that way. Why do you buy failing businesses? Mainly I originally bought them because of the price tag and it was something that I could easily afford to do. Uh, now I buy them because I like the challenge of turning them around. What's the first step to saving a failing business? First step is just to look at the cost base of the business and figure out where you can save money, see where the business has gone wrong, meet with the leadership team and figure out the adjustments that you need to make to get the business to be profitable. What causes most businesses to fail? Poor leadership. It's almost every time a lack of leadership. Uh, it's never the, the store level employees or the mid-level employees. It's always been the leadership team. How do you balance maintaining the heritage of iconic brands like HMV with the need for innovation and modernization? I think you just have to stay true to the roots and the roots of HMV are music, it's film, it's having vinyl and it's sticking with that core customer, but also listening to what your customer is telling you if they want pop culture product or whatever else is is new and, and coming down so i think you have to try and be authentic to what it's known for but not turn away from other opportunities is retail still viable for sure it is 100 percent um i think we're seeing more and more customers want to come and have a physical experience uh, and, and wanting to shop. So I, I don't think you'll see physical retail go away anytime soon. What is the future of retail? I would say it's what we're at right now where online is very convenient. People always order online, you'll get information online. People wanna go to stores and, and spend their time there. One, it's a, it's a great way to kill some time, but I also think when you're around like-minded people, if you look at HMV as an example, you're around music lovers, film lovers, so you get to talk about your passion and what you love. If you look at another business I own in Canada, Toys R Us, it's about kids having a lot of fun in a, in a toy store. Babies are us, the parents coming to us as the experts to, to learn. So I think each business that you have that's a physical retail just has to hit a need. What is your daily routine? I'm an early riser, although I love to sleep in, I am up every day at 5 a.m. I work out for uh, one hour, I do breakfast with my daughter and put her in the car to, to go off to school and then uh, my meetings start um, right around seven in the morning and honestly it's a lot of meetings all day, every day, just talking to different people, looking at different opportunities. My day sort of wraps up at five where I do a family dinner, put my daughter to bed at seven and then back at it again and then weekends is just a lot of family time as well. So I, I try and balance the two of, of having a young family and, and still working hard. What motivates you now that you're rich? I think I'm motivated by by turning things around, certainly by saving jobs. I think that's a really important thing. I feel really good having a lot of employees that were able to stay at the, the businesses that I own that they love being a part of. So I think uh, for me, it's really just the, the drive to keep turning and fixing businesses. Was there a moment when you felt like you made it? No, I still haven't felt like I made it, to be honest. I think. Uh, that's one of those things. I don't know if everyone's like that, but certainly for me, uh, I still look at what I've done and, and I don't think it's nearly enough. And I think I could have done a, a lot more. So um, I, I've yet to have that moment yet that I feel like I truly made it. How do you decide what to spend your time on? You hear it all the time, just how valuable your time is. And, and uh, I very much feel that way. For me, it's just about figuring out what am I really enjoying doing? And if I'm not enjoying it, I can take the pain for X amount of time because everything in your day is not going to be great. You're not going to love everything you do. That's just not life. But I think when it becomes too long, you, you move on. So I really just gauge it by saying, am I enjoying it? You know, every day is precious. So am I enjoying what I'm doing? As long as I am, then I'll keep doing it. What does a billionaire do in his spare time? Uh, I'm pretty boring. I, I, uh, I spend a lot of time with my family. My dad's my best friend, so we do, we do lunch most days. Uh, my daughter and my wife, we're all very close. I love to read, so I'm, I'm reading constantly, a lot of books. And then in the summer, if I can fish, that's, uh, that's why I spend a lot of my time fishing at the cottage. Does money make you happy? I've had money and I've not had money, and I would say undoubtedly having money uh, certainly makes life better, easier, uh, and more fun. 
So I think to an extent it does make you happy, but there's a basic level that you need. Once you've got beyond that, then I think actually it's a, a diminishing return and in some cases actually goes to the negative and makes you less happy. Why did you become an entrepreneur? My father was an entrepreneur. You know, he's a steel worker for 16 years and started a business with $50,000. It just got into my blood as well, seeing the, the work, but seeing what you can accomplish, it was just fantastic. And since I always envied my dad, that's uh, that was easy for me to know that's the path I wanted. What should you invest your money in? I'm always gonna say that you should be doing your own business. You know, I think it's great to work for someone. I think it's great to learn by work for someone but I think ultimately uh, if you want true freedom and you want to be able to make a good amount of money I think it's uh, the best way uh, it's something I would encourage my daughter my niece everyone I meet is uh, start your own business what has been the biggest risk you've taken in your entrepreneurial journey almost everything I've done felt like a risk at the time um, outside of going into my parents toy business the first business I bought at Sunrise Records uh, I felt like if that failed, I would lose everything. After that, I, I bought HMV Canada and I thought, well, if that fails, I'm going to have nothing. Every investment I've made has kind of always just felt like I have to make this work. Even now when I make investments, even though logically I understand I'm not going to lose everything, I feel like each investment I make is just so critical to, to being uh, a success. What's been your most costly mistake? You know what, uh, in, in Canada, a retailer went out of business and, and I took over their operations. Uh, it was Bed Bath and & Beyond and, and we opened up our own chain. Uh, and very quickly, it was, it was very clear it was not going to work and we just couldn't make it work. But you know, that was, uh, that was an eight figure loss for me. Uh, so certainly that was kind of uh, the first time that it really stung. How do you handle setbacks or failures in business? You know, I used to hear people say, oh, you've, you know, failure's good and this and that. And I always just thought it was, it was crap. But I, I will say the learning that you get from it is fantastic. It really levels you and, and I think it actually helps keep your ego in check uh, and, and brings you back down to, to earth. So I think the way you handle it is you look at what's good about it you try not to make that mistake again, uh, and you just have to move forward. There's no sense in focusing too much on it because it's just gonna hurt your future. What gets you excited about business in the future? Uh, for me, it's just new opportunities. I love looking at new opportunities. I love looking at a new business, meeting with new leadership teams. So I think for me, it's, it's really centers around, you know, what's new, what else can we do?